Hey guys, so today I'm going to be showing you how to make this rubber duck design, which was designed by me. And I really love this design. Um, this was just a really random design I came up with. I had been thinking about making a rubber duck for a while. I thought it would be cute. So yes, these are all my ducks. Um, these two on the ends, as well as this pink one, are fails. The green and the... Um, these two are the ones I'll be showing you how to make. It was just me finally figuring out the body shape. Um, these guys don't look horrible. I really like this pink guy, but it was just like, there was some small details that need fixing as I'm very picky with my designs. But yeah, I really love this design and I feel like this design is also really good for beginners. So if you're a beginner and you're watching this, you should probably be able to make this because it's really easy and there's not much attaching. So all we attach is the eyes and the beak and yeah. So the band count for these guys is 150 bands, which isn't bad at all. Um, so that's good. And I didn't count the beak in the band count. I always forget to count the beak. But yeah, so the whole duck is 150 bands. Um, also, I'll have the pattern in the description for the duck. If you know how to follow my patterns, I always put them in the description. I actually wasn't aware until recently. I've been following some tutorials and not everybody puts the, the pattern in the description. But yeah, I, I have my pattern down there as well as the band count, which I said, but yeah. Uh, I think that's all I wanted to say on these socks, though, uh, so we can get started. So, of course, you're going to need a hook to make this design, and I'm using a double-ended hook, but you don't need it. I just, I really like this hook. Um, you're also going to need a C-clip to mark your rows, or something to mark your rows. And today, my duck will be pastel yellow. But I think that's all I wanted to say, so we're going to just get started. So, to start, we are going to wrap a band three times around our hooks, so one, two, three, and then we will be putting five stitches in this cap band. Uh, if you don't know what that means, I'm going to show you in a second. I'm just picking up some bands off camera. Oops. Okay. So, what you're going to do is you're going to pull a band through everything on your hook, so or just the cat band, basically, because that is everything on your hook. And you put both ends back on. And then you're going to push the back one over the front one. And we're going to do kind of the exact same thing again. So we're going to go through the cat band. We're going to pull a band through just the cat band. We're going to put both ends back on. And then we're going to push the back one over the front one. And then we push that other loop over as well. And we're going to do that exact same thing we just did three more times, so we have five loops in total. So we just go back through the cap band, we pull a band through just the cap band, we put both ends back on our hook, we push the back one over the front one, and then we push that other loop over from last time. And we just need to do that two more times. I'm trying to keep my fingers out of the way so you guys can see. And we're going to do that one more time. Like that. So once you think you have five loops, the way we check to make sure we have five loops is we're just going to count um, these loops on the side. So I usually start by counting them on my hook. So this is one, two, three, four, and five. This one on the edge might look like it's a loop, but it's not. You can tell it's the across band when you look at the other side. So just make sure you're not counting that guy. But once you're sure you have five loops, what we're going to do is instead of going back into the cat band, we are going to go into this first loop here and like I said before it's not this across band even though it might look like it is so just make sure you're not going into that one and then you're just going to pull the band through that loop put the back one over the front one and then put the other loop over and then we put a c-clip on this one to mark our rows okay so now for this row we are going to be increasing everything so that basically just means we'll be putting two stitches in every loop all the way around until we get back to the c-clip so I'll show you what that means. So this um, loop already has one in it, but because we're increasing everything, we need to put another stitch in it. So like that. And then we'll go into the next loop once we have two stitches and we'll make two stitches in this one. So it's one and then we go back and do another one. Oops, I always hate pulling my hook out. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, so that's two. And we just keep doing this all the way around. So we're just going into each loop and we're putting two stitches in each loop until we get back to the C clip. So that's one. Go back and then do another one. So it's two. Just keep doing this until we get back to the C clip. Oops. Also, I'm sorry if you can hear my family. I'm filming and I just heard my dad yell good morning at my sister. So if you heard that, it is also Sunday, so they might be watching football in a few. Um, but once you get to the C clip, all you're going to do is you're going to go through that loop, make a stitch like you normally would. Okay, they are watching football. I hear them. So you're just going to make a stitch, and then you'll just move the C-clip up onto that stitch we just made. So after that last row, you should have 10 loops, so once again we'll count. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, oops, uh, let me recount. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So just make sure you have 10 loops. Now we are going to be two, doing two rows normal, so we're basically just putting one stitch in every loop until we get back to the C-clip for two rows, and after each of those rows, you still have ten loops. Um, I'm going to stay on camera to do both of them because it's not very big at this point, and yeah. So all we're doing this row is we are putting, just like I said before, one stitch in every loop until we get back to the C-clip. So we're not increasing or anything, we're just doing one stitch. Yeah. Also, you probably noticed my nails are Christmassy because um, I'm filming this like two days after Christmas and I was so sad I didn't remember to do Christmas nails for my Elf and Peppermint video, but oh well. I guess we have Christmas nails in the duck video. But yeah, so we're just doing one stitch in every loop until we get back to the C-clip. And we are almost there. And then once you get to the C-clip, just like before, we'll make a stitch in the loop that has the C-clip in it. And then we'll just get this C-clip and we'll move it up onto the new stitch, I guess. Um, so after that last row, because it was just one row normal, we should still have ten loops, so we'll count. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we're going to do the exact same thing we just did again, and I'm just going to stay on camera to do it just because there's no point in going off camera because it literally takes me a second to do this. So like I said, we're just doing the same thing as last row. Putting one stitch in every loop. Um, yeah, I decided to make a pastel duck today because... Um, I just realized that all those ducks were done in uh, opaque band, not opaque, jelly bands, and sometimes with opaque bands, the, like, I think his tail bit might end up a little more pointy, and I wanted to see what that looked like, so I decided to use opaque bands, because those bands are, like, a jelly consistency, and I noticed, like, with my star design, that if you do the stars in jelly instead of, like, an opaque color, they end up looking not as pointy, so I just wanted to see if I made a duck with opaque bands, if it would look, like, his butt would look a little more pointed. I was just curious, okay? But yes. Uh, so we're just gonna keep doing that. And then once we get to the C-clip, once again, we'll just make a stitch and move it up. Okay, so after that last row, we should have 10 stitches. I'm not gonna count just because I'm lazy, but if you wanna make sure, count. So after doing two rows normal, this is what your duck should look like. So now what we are going to be doing is we're going to be decreasing everything. So every single thing we do is going to be a decrease. And if you don't know what a decrease is, I will show you. So what we're going to do is decrease. I forgot what I was doing for a second. So the way you decrease is you grab the front part of the first loop and then you go to the next loop and you grab the back part of the next loop and you just make a stitch. And that's a decrease. And we're going to be doing this all the way around until we get back to the C-clip. 
So you grab the front part of the first loop and the back part of the next loop and you just make a stitch on this. And we just keep doing this. Also, I forgot to say this at the start, but I have a Lumigurmi Basics video now, so if you ever get confused at any point on any of the stitches or anything, um, you can go to that video and I explain a little slower. Um, so once we get to this, the loop before the C-clip, um, that will be the last decrease, but I don't decrease on this one. So this one, the one before the C-clip, you're just going to do a normal stitch. And then on the C-clip as well, we just do a normal stitch and we move it up because I didn't want to decrease on the band that has the C-clip on it. So after that last row, you should have six loops. So one, two, three, four, five, six. If you have five loops, you probably decreased on the last one before the C-clip. So just make sure you didn't do that. But now we are going to be... Uh, where am I? Okay, we'll be increasing everything. I lost where I was in my pattern. And increasing everything is just like before, so we'll just be doing two stitches in each loop all the way around until we get back to the C-clip. So this one already has one stitch in it, so we gotta go back in and do another one. And we're increasing, and we increased before, so I'm hoping you already know what this is. Um, so yeah, we're just putting two stitches in each loop all the way around until we get back to the C-clip. So one, two, oh, I just realized I didn't get cotton balls. So one, two, boy, I don't know if I'm going fast. I kind of feel like I'm going fast. I hate when this happens. But yeah, we're just putting two stitches in each loop until we get back to the C-clip. I hear my mom getting, uh, my, yeah, my mom getting mad at my dad for yelling about football when I'm filming. Because I always tell him I'm filming because my family is extremely noisy. Like, they, they're quite noisy. Um, so I always ask them that, they, well, I don't, I don't tell them to be quiet, really. I'm just like, be aware that I'm filming. So if you don't want... Anything you guys say in my tutorial, don't yell about it, <laughs> kind of thing, you know? But yeah, so we'll just be increasing everything, and I'm almost done. And then, once you get to the C-clip, just like before, we will be making a stitch. And moving it up. So after that last row, um, we should have 12 bands in total. So if we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So once you made sure you have 12 bands, what we are going to be doing... I'm making sure I'm in the right spot. Um, okay, so we're going to be doing one row normal around, but we are also going to be adding... Um, it's kind of hard to see on this guy. Let me get a different one. We are going to be adding this little chain on the back that makes the tail and I'll show you what I mean by that in a second I'm just kind of letting you know okay so uh, okay so like I said we'll be doing one row normal but we will also be adding that thing on the back so on your second stitch so basically the one right after the C-clip what we're gonna do we are going to chain on two to the next loop. So we just do one and then two like that. And then we will make a stitch at the top of this loop, but we won't push this back one over yet. So I'll usually just let it hang like that. <laughs> and then we're gonna go back into this first, um, the first loop we chained on and we're gonna make two stitches in this. So one, and then go back and do another one, so that's two. So it should look something like that. And then I'll just grab this loop that's hanging and just kind of like add it in. And then we'll be going into this top loop after we um, add it on this. And we'll be doing three more stitches in this one. So it has four stitches in the top loop in total. So this is one. two, and then three. So that should be four now. And you can kind of tell if you have four in the top loops because if you see four of these little horizontally bits, 
you'll know you put four in this um, top chain. And then we're gonna go back into this first part of the chain we chained on, and we're just gonna do two on this side again. Like that. So now you should have something that looks a little bit like this, and like I said, we'll be doing one stitch normal the rest of the way around, but I just wanna make sure you're not lost on that bit because I know it's a little bit hard. So yeah, it should look like you have two on the side, two on the side, and then four on the top. Because that's what you have. Um, yeah. And now we'll just be doing one stitch in every loop until we get back to the C-clip, so nothing fancy. Okay, I just paused because I was like feeling like I was going to choke because for the top, from the amount of talking I've already done. But yeah, we're just doing... One row normal, so we're just putting one stitch in every loop now until we get back to the C-clip. But I guess technically this row we also added the tail, but we're just going to ignore that for now because this part's pretty easy. Um, I'm actually so ha I'm sorry, I'm just like so happy with my Christmas nails. Because um, there's always like, whenever I paint my nails, I always like mess one up. And I'm so happy because this time they actually all look good. And it was like a miracle. And yeah. I always say yeah. I need to stop. <laughs> but I'm almost back at the C-clip. Okay, so once you get to the C-clip, you're just going to make a stitch like we normally would. And move it up. Okay, so after that last row, we should have... According to my pattern 19, so let's just make sure. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Oh, we do have 19. So after that last row, we should have 19 loops um, total. So just count to make sure you have that. I was a little iffy on this number, that's why I was like, oh, we do have 19, because I wasn't sure if I wrote it down wrong, but I wrote it down correctly. So now what we're going to be doing is we're just going to do one row around this normally, so just one row with one stitch in every loop, nothing, nothing, basically just one row normal around, so we just put one stitch in every loop until we get back to the C-clip. I'm trying to think of things I can talk about because I hate just like sitting here in silence and looming, <laughs> and it's going to take me a second to uh, go around. So, I don't really have anything to talk about today. This duck design, though, was a little um, frustrating, like, trying to figure out what I did. Because I made it once um, while watching TV with my family. And then I thought I figured it out on live the other day. And then I was taking photos, and my sister got one of my ducks and was like, they look different. And I was like, what? And so she was technically the one who figured out that... I didn't do it correctly, and then I spent the next like, day trying to figure out what the heck I did. I mean, it probably would be helpful if I wrote down patterns as I went. It would also probably speed up tutorials, but I just always forget. And I also feel like sometimes when I'm writing stuff down, it just ruins like my flow or whatever when I'm designing. So, that's why I don't, but I really should, because it causes so many problems later when I can't remember what I did the first time. But I think I have tried to write down while I design, and every time I do that, my designs just do not turn out, and I feel like it's because I'm writing them down. So, that's why I don't do it, even though I really should. But yes, we are almost there. So once we get to the sea level, once again, we will just be moving it. So after that last row, if you count, you should still have 19 loops, and I'm going to make sure I do. So 1, 2, 3, uh, I can also count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Okay, so we still have 19 loops. So now this row, we are going to be doing one row normal, but in two spaces, we're increasing. So that is what is different. But, I keep saying but too much. Um... Yeah, so we're just increasing two on the sides. Basically, we increased two back here where the tail is. 
So usually I'll increase. I'm just making sure I'm increasing in the right spot. Okay. Okay, I think I know where I increased. So we're gonna increase on the third stitch. So we're gonna do one. Actually, actually no, we increase on this one. So we're gonna increase in the second stitch. So we'll be putting two stitches in this loop. And then we are gonna do, I think it's about three single ones. So one, two, three. It's actually four, so four. And then on the fifth one, we do an increase again. Um, and then the rest of this, we're just doing one stitch in every loop. It's just we increase two on the sides. Um, it doesn't, like, you don't have to put the increases exactly where I did, honestly, as long as they're, like, in the back butt area, it's fine. So if yours is, like, one forward or one back, it's not a big deal. I just, that, that's just where I put them. So technically, I put the increases on the second and then the, like, the fifth after the second. So, like, the seventh band, that's where I put my increases. But now we're just going to be doing one more normal around the rest. So we just put one stitch in every loop until we get back to the C-clip. So all we did this row was just increase two in the back, technically. And then the rest is just one row normal. Let me write down where I put them, just so I can put that in the description so it's helpful for people. Uh, fifth. No, it was, yeah, fifth and, no, seventh. Sorry, I just wanted to make sure I had that. So we're just going around. These rows right here take the longest just because of how wide he gets. But we're actually not far from done, surprisingly. Yeah. This stuff comes together really quick, and I actually really love that about this design because you can make it so, so quick. Oops. Dropped a band. I'm just picking up bands right now. Okay. Oh, I was actually almost at the C-clip, so once we get to the C-clip, all we're going to do is just make a stitch, and then we'll move the C-clip up, like that. So after that last row, according to my pattern, we should have 20, oh my god, I went blurry. We should have 21 loops, so if we count, we should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Yep, 21 loops, okay. So now what we are going to be doing is where the I? It's because my pattern's just like flip flopping things. Okay, so now we're going to be decreasing every fourth loop. So we're going to. So this is one, and this is two, and then three, and then on the fourth loop, we do a decrease. So we grab the front part of the first loop. And then we go to the next loop and we go to the back part of the second loop and we make a stitch on this. And that's a decrease. And we're just going to be decreasing on the fourth, like I said. So we do one, two, three. And then on the fourth one again, we do a decrease. So front part of the first loop, back part of the next loop. And then we do this. And so one, two, three, and then we do a decrease. I need more bands. Okay, I just did a decrease. So it's one, two, three. We do a decrease again. 
And now we're just gonna move up the C-clip. Okay, so after that last row, according to my pattern, we should have 17. So if we count, we should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Okay, I was just making sure, sure of something on my pattern. So this row again, we will be decreasing every fourth, so it's exactly the same as last row where we do three single stitches and then on the fourth one we do a decrease. So we're just gonna do that exact same thing again. And let me make sure my camera's focused, it looks a little fuzzy. There we go. So this one was one, so this is two. Oops, two. Three. We do a decrease. Was it? Yeah. I wasn't sure if I counted the three single stitches, but I think I did. So, oops. That should have been three. I keep losing count. Three. Maybe one. Two. And then three. We do another decrease. And now we just go to the C clip. So one, two. And I guess the C clip's on the third band, so we don't have to do another decrease. And then we'll just move the C clip up. So after that last row, we should have 14 bands. So if we count, we should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So this row, we will be decreasing every third. And it's the same thing, kind of thing, as last time. Except for we do two single stitches, and then on the third one, we do a decrease. So basically, we're just doing one less um, single or normal stitch, however you call it. Okay. So, this is one, and then two, and like I said on the third one we do a decrease, so we will decrease this one, and we'll just do that again, so we go one, two, and then on the third one we do a decrease, so we grab the front part of the first loop, back part of the next loop. We just keep doing this all the way around. So we do two single ones. Two. And then we do a decrease. I highly doubt it, but my dad is, <laughs> that you can hear it, but my dad's playing guitar. So if there is sudden background music, that is why. So that's one. Two. And then on the one on the C clip, we're supposed to do a decrease, so we're just going to decrease on the one on the C clip. Like that. And then we will just move this up. So after that last row, we should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We should have 9 loops. I'm just writing down what I have because I'm kind of missing the numbers for these last few decreases. But yeah, after that last row, you should have nine loops. Um, but if I'm being perfectly honest, if you have like ten loops, it's probably not the biggest deal. Your duck will be fine. I'm also just now realizing we need to stuff him before he's closed. So I'm going to go grab some stuffing and I'll be right back. Okay, so I got caught in balls. And it was kind of funny because on the way over, my dad's like, can I scream now? Because he's watching football. And I'm like, you can scream before. Like, if I'm filming, just be aware. Like, your football screaming will be in my video. Because I have filmed videos before and they're screaming with football and you can totally hear them. Oop. But yeah. I'm just tearing up my cotton ball. And then I'll stuff it in. I always nearly forget to stuff all my creations. I'm horrible at remembering when to stuff. For whatever reason. But yeah, uh, I'm using cotton ball, but you can use whatever the heck you want to stuff. I know a lot of you use, like, polyfill, but I always, um, I never have, oh, I have polyfill, but I, I don't know, I like how my creations feel with cotton balls. 
but I do like using like my with my narwhals I like using the polyfill I don't know I think they feel fun but for most of my other creations I use cotton balls and we're just stuffing him we're actually almost done there's like two rows left and then we are done so I think this thing comes together pretty fast just making sure he's nice and stuffed because I accidentally understuffed the green one and I don't like how he looks so I always slightly overstuff just so that way there's enough stuffing to like fill when we close up okay that should be good so then we'll just put our hook back in so this next row we are going to be decreasing every other loop so we just did a decrease so the next one will just be one single or normal stitch and then we'll do a decrease and we just keep doing this all the way around so we alternate doing one like normal stitch and then we just do a decrease and one and then we do a decrease and I'm just gonna do one normal one on the C-clip but you could probably decrease if you wanted. But at this point, honestly, we can take the C-clip out. But if we count, we should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we should have seven. Seven? Is that correct? Two. Wait, one, two, three. Yeah, we have seven. Okay. I was questioning some things. Because last round we had nine. But I, I don't know, honestly. Honestly, though, if you have a little off from seven, you're probably fine. This is literally the last thing we do. So if it's a little off here, you're probably okay. Um, but yeah, now we're just going to be decreasing everything until he's closed. So every single thing we do is going to be a decrease. Till we are closed. I usually count how many decreases I do just to tell you guys like when I usually close up. So I just did one decrease. This is the second decrease I did. The third decrease, and I think after this, so this is the fourth decrease, so on the fifth decrease, I'm going to close it off. So usually how do I close it off is I'll pick up the stitches as if I'm going to decrease, and then instead I'll pull a band through everything on my hook, put the back one over the front one, and pull it tight. And then we just hide our tail. I'm actually really loving how this pastel duck looks, like he's so cute. I'm just hiding, hiding the tail in, but I always have such a hard time um, hiding the tails in on camera. So, there we go. Okay, I'm just kind of squishing him to make sure he looks okay. So there's our duck. I don't know why he looks bigger than my other ducks, but I think it's just because I used opaque bands this time. But now we just need to put the face and the... Um, Eyes on them, so let me look at my eyes because I forgot to get them. Okay, so I put my, um, I don't know why I have these bands on my finger. We don't need them anymore. Um, but I already have my eyes on my bands. Like I said before, if you don't have eye bands or they're not really eye bands, um, I show how to put beads on bands in my basics video, my Lumerary basics video. So if you don't know how to do that, you can check that out. But, um, if you don't have eye bands, you can just wrap a band for or five times around your hook depending on how tight you want your eye and just pull a band through and it'll work exactly the same as my eye band would so yeah so we have our duck I was a little iffy on if I did it wrong but I think it's just the bands at this point because I did the exact same thing I think he just looks bigger because I used opaque bands this time but yes he's he's duck shape um <laughs> anyways let's put the eyes on so usually where I'll put the eyes I actually have a pretty specific spot for the ducks is I'll put them there's a cab band. I usually go right here. I don't know if that's a little high up. Should I go a little lower? Where do I usually have them? No, I usually put them right here. Okay, I'm in the right spot. And then I just slip knot them in. And we hide the tail. that 
And then I'll go about, I think I usually go right here. And I'll tie the iron. Like that. Then once again, we'll hide the tail. Like that. And now we're gonna do the beak. So I got some orange bands for my beak. I was originally gonna make his beak neon orange, but I feel like he needs to be like classic orange beak, so I got some opaque orange bands. And I have a pretty specific spot for where I do the beak as well. So I put the eyes on, like here's a cat band. And there's like this row of bands afterwards, and that's usually where I put the eyes. But you can put the eyes wherever you feel like you want your face. It's not a big deal. But then right below where I put the eyes, and not where these horizontal bands are, like above that, like really close to the eyes is where I'll put the beak. Because I put it lower and it doesn't look bad, but I just don't like it. So that's why I put it right here. Because I feel like it looks cutest when it's really really close to the eyes and I forgot to explain what I did but <laughs> let me show you again because I was talking I forgot to explain how to actually do the beak so once you've picked where you want your beak if you saw what I did all you're gonna do is you're gonna stitch in three so I went right here and we just make a stitch and then you pick another spot make a stitch and then you go right here and you just make a stitch but I forgot to explain me doing that I'm so sorry <laughs> And then all we're going to do is we're going to turn, and we're going to make stitches in these two loops going the other way. And then, oops, 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 <laughs> let go of it, like that. And then that is it for our beak, so now we're just going to tie it into our duck, and usually where I'll tie it in, you see this little weird loop that's like the first stitch we made? I go into that, then I just get a orange band I, off camera, I pull it through everything on our hook, and I tie it tight. And that is where I put the beak. Oh my god, he looks adorable. I absolutely love this one. Okay, so... I think that is it. I don't like that you can kind of see right here where the orange band is, so let me just fix that. I mean, you could also tie it in with the yellow band, I just I didn't want to, because then you can kind of see that as well, even though it might have been smarter to. But yeah, I think that is it for this tutorial. <laughs> like I said, this duck comes together pretty quickly and super easy. Um, I hope your duck turned out okay. Uh, if you were a little confused on what I did with the beak, all I did was I stitched in, stitched in three right under the eyes, then I just turned my hook and went the other way, and then did two stitches in those loops, and then I just tied it in. So, really simple. But like I said, I hope your duck turned out okay. Uh, if not, I, <laughs> I don't know. Um, but if your duck did turn out okay, definitely share it with me on Instagram. I love seeing whenever you guys make any of my creations. Um... And yeah, so I'll have my Instagram description as well as the pattern and everything. Um, I hope you guys like this video. And yeah, subscribe to me if you want to see more tutorials from me. I have so many more things coming out. Uh, I don't have anything I can show you right now, but there's like so many things I need to make tutorials for. Um, and yeah, so I think that's it for this tutorial. I'm going to go. I hope you're going to turn it okay. And bye.